Hey everyone, I'm Charlie Cote, and that's my son Alex. Hi there. We'll read a little poetry to you, and we're gonna sing some songs. And uh, today is would have been the 33rd birthday of my son and Alex's older brother Charlie. So this is in tribute to him, and I'll be reading from my uh, latest book of poems called "I Play His Red Guitar." You can probably see the red guitar behind me. And uh, so the first thing I want to share is that when Charlie passed away in 2005 um, from cancer, we found his journal. And in his journal, we came across this little poem that I'd like to share right now. Certainty is the cage that keeps us safe from curiosity. I've been released from the cage. I am the songbird and I'm flying for the window. I know it's closed, but I plan on breaking through. Now it's gonna share a song called Songbird, right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> looking on my Instagram the other day and I realized what tour it was from. Um, it would have been in the summer of 2015. Wow. And uh, yeah, we were on tour. We were driving from North Carolina somewhere and we were just driving through the mountains and I wrote it as a poem originally and then put it to music. I had a couple different versions of it actually over the years, but that's the one that I like to play when it's just me. I think I've heard all those different versions as you thought the song. Yeah, yeah, you probably have. Great. Well, I have one that's related. It's called Elegy for a Songbird, and it's from my book, I Play His Red Guitar, which is out, um, by Tiger Bark Press. So if you want to get a copy of it, you can go to tigerbarkpress.com. 
This one's called Elegy for a Songbird. See the debris of his story piled in the boxes we placed in the attic. The ribbons and trophies, this bluebird shirt for a quilt will never stitch. Those progress reports, a pleasure to have in class. A young man who gets it like he got that bass at the lake. See him trolling a lure off the side of our old metal boat, then landing a fish that I struggled to get off the hook. See him standing alone on the slate shore of our home, offering bread for the meddler. See him whistling like the black cap chickadee. See us now, lit up and singing his song by the campfire. You are a bird breaking out of its cage. That grief near the spot I dug a hold of planted sunset maple, a single sunset maple. I thought the ache in my shoulder would sprout wings. Yeah, we had a lot of songs around that campfire, didn't we? We sure did. But we moved the campfire from where it used to be to the yeah. outside, probably because we thought that the campfire smoke might have been harming the tree that we planted. Right. Yeah, but then it turned out to be not a good tree for uh, being that close to the water. Or was it the poisonous roots from the other tree? Either one. It's pretty ironic, isn't it? We had yeah. a different kind of tree because the sunset wouldn't grow there. Yeah. Um, I'm going to share a poem that's yeah, that I got the title for the book from. It's called What I Wear. And you'll notice the red guitar and you'll notice what I'm wearing right now. So it's called What I Wear. This world of worlds is a prairie of clouds and sun glare. Below the smoldering hearths shed smoke like a radiated hair. Worth less than his breath on earth, his song played in my ear. Still I listen for clues, the gift of his verse. See me wear this blue plaid shirt, I play his red guitar. I think you have a song about a guitar, right? I do. I love the song I wrote for my guitar when I had to go on tour one time. And unfortunately, right now, I don't have that guitar. The binding is coming off right here. And so I gave it to my friend right before all of this COVID-19 stuff happened. And so he's got a hold of it. And I've been missing it a lot. But it's been nice to play this guitar in the meantime. I think that's my old guitar, isn't it? That black one? It is. Yeah, it's your guitar from college. Oh, wow. Cool. <laughs> All right, so this song's called Heartstrings. Without a song, no 
Guitar never sounded better, by the way. I can't yeah, it as well as you. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing how you've just been developing your ability on the guitar. It's been fun to watch. Yeah, well, you were the first one to teach me anything, so thanks. Right. I taught that. you Blackbird the wrong way. I'm very proud of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I see that part that you have next to you, and I know that's um, from something that um, your mom made Intro to Charlie. So I'm going to read a poem first about it, which will be self explanatory, and then you can say a little bit more about that, okay? Sure. This poem called In Which. In which she read Milne's books to help him sleep, and he would get the joke, knowing B, 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 and H, B stood for the softer threads in her box of pencils. And he'd learned too soon that he, just like she, would have to be brave and helpful, that she and he once played their own game of sticks in which she always let him win, and how she would learn to let him go away forever, go by himself to a place that she'd never been, no way to put things in order, where first things stay first, he'd get to remain. That last winter, she warmed his hands in red mittens, mittens she later sewed into that, that book that once read to him of Uzzah to soothe him that last night, tucking him into his own woolery, warm like Kanga's pouch, in which they'd never have to say goodbye, never find themselves in such tight places, in which she'd ask, who is next? Like Owl, who? And show, show us that, uh, that book, Alex, and say something about it. So this is The World of Pooh, and uh, this is a pair of mittens that my grandmother knitted herself. And so my mom put them in this book, and then in the front, it has this worked into it where it says, in which we say goodbye. And there are 18 stitches there, right? Yeah, on I the, think so. On the other side, I believe. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. It is. Well, I think you have a song about your grandmother, don't you? I do. Let's hear it's it. Called the, it's called The Lady in the Sun. The lady in the sun puts color on the land, onto everyone, the flowers in her hand, she's passing through the cloud, the ribbons in her hair, shining all around, the color everywhere. Virginia, shine on to me. Let the sunlight on down. Oh, Virginia, shine on to me. Lady in the sun, 
see it's across the sky. So look into the smile, it's blind into the eye. She's setting on the water and ambering the waves. Away until the morning to see her again. Oh, Virginia, shine on to me. Let the sunlight come down. Oh, Virginia, shine on to me. Here to stay till the end of the day, she is going. In her place, till the world turns away, she is gone. Oh, she is gone. Lady in the sun, shining on to me, covering my skin. Positivity. When the sky brings rain, I hide my love away. Wait for her to shine on me another day. Oh, Virginia, shine on to me. Let the sunlight come down. Oh, Virginia, shine on to me. Shine on to me. Shine on to me. Wow. She would love that song. It's a waltz, so we could all dance to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Virginia taught me to always draw the level of love that's already inside of myself and not look for others to fill up that well. And I'm wondering what your brother meant to you in terms of music. In terms of music? Yeah. Well, he taught me how to play music. Besides you teaching me how to play guitar, I had expressed interest in playing the drums when I was really young, and he had friends who had drum sets, so he had already pretty much taught himself how to play the drums a bit. And so the second we got a drum set, he was already teaching me how to play it. So, And I, w- I went to school to study the drums eventually, and I, I work now as a drummer mostly. And uh, so I owe him a lot in that he, he gave me my first lessons on that instrument. And also just in terms of playing in a band and what it's like to play music with other people, I got my first experiences of doing that with him. So, I don't know. It shaped me. You were old playing out in the clubs, as I remember. Yeah. I learned a lot about that lifestyle, too. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I remember those days. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Well, I know that he gave me the gift of uh, curiosity, creativity, and kindness always, you know, preferencing kindness and accepting yeah. all things. Uh, I didn't really miss him so much. I just want to wish you a happy birthday, Charlie. And yeah, happy birthday, all Charlie. Tuning into this, um, poetry and music are great ways that we can express ourselves and create a container to deal with all the chaos. There's a lot of chaos in the world right now with this pandemic. I want to close with a poem that just talks about singing. And it's called, it is, it's the last poem in my book. It is this. Muted blue after March snow, the sky waits for its singing, its geese flying north. I hear them in my mind and know it's this, the singing out that brings them home. Hopefully we're all home and safe right now. And we again, want to thank you for listening to what we have to say and we have to perform and Alex, what a cool way to hang out with you. Yeah. So it'll be so nice when this is over and we can actually get together, but I hope this so. is fun too. <laughs> okay. 
Talk to you later. Bye. Bye, everyone.